Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Sean's a name and credits the game today. Now since I've been making tons of videos on credit, I've had so many friends and family reach out to me and say, hey Sean, I saw your videos. Which credit card should I get for a starter card? Whether it's my very first card or my second card and I'm looking to get a couple of good benefits. And then I tell them there's tons of great options like this one and this one and this one and this one. It's like, all of these are debit cards and this is my voter ID card. Gotcha. Now, but here we are. I'm finally making a video on it. The seven best cards you can get moving into 2021 for a very good starter credit card. So, here we go. You should know the drill by now. Absolutely demolish that YouTube like button so the YouTube gods promote this video to a bajillion people. Serious, I gotta pay the bills around here and I spend like 10 plus hours on these videos, so taking two seconds to hit the like button should be a no-brainer. But okay, this video is really meant for people who don't have a credit card or very little credit history. Don't get me wrong, it's a bonus if you do have kind of a basic card to build some credit, but ideally the cards I'm gonna be going over in this video is for people with very little or no credit history. And don't get discouraged, these cards are still pretty freaking awesome. And I also wanna say, don't get this confused with individuals who have bad credit. Bad credit and not a whole lot of credit are completely different things. This video is for people with not a whole lot of credit. If you have bad credit and you want some great credit card suggestions for that, check the link in the description. I've made a very popular video on the three best cards you should get if you have bad credit. Glad we got that out of the way, but I wanna start by telling you my credit card journey or how I got my first credit card because it's very unique. Now, way back in the day, my mom actually added me as an authorized user on one of her cards and then came to me and said, hey, Sean, we need to get you a credit card um, you know, so you can start building up your credit history and you know, build a good credit portfolio. And I told her, I was like, you know what, mom, I appreciate that, but I really don't need one. I buy everything cash. I'm good. I don't, I don't need a credit card. And she looked at me and she goes, well, that's funny you say that, Sean, because I ordered you one 30 days ago. It just came in the mail. Here you go. And so I'm sitting there going, mom, first of all, I'm pretty sure that was highly illegal for you to open a credit card in my name. Second of all, I'm probably never going to use this. Point of the story is I'm actually really glad she did that because when I actually got involved in credit and I wanted to get actual credit cards, I could get pretty much any one I wanted because I had like a 760 plus credit score and tons of credit history. But unfortunately, not everyone is in those shoes and that's why I'm making this video today. The credit cards on this list today have a very high chance of approving you with very little to no credit history. And if all of them deny you, then just give my mom a call. Enough rambling. Your first major credit card is super important because you want to keep it for a very long time and you want to actually get some good use out of it. So the major components in factoring what makes a great starter card is the following. Absolutely no annual fee. Frick that, all right? You don't want a fee if you plan on slowly building your credit. Two, cards that have great upgrade paths, okay? Cards that in five to 10 years can upgrade to something better without losing all of that credit history. Three, rewards based on spending categories that you will actually use every month. And then four, a welcome bonus is of course a bonus. Oh, and we're excluding student cards and secured credit cards today. That's for another video. We're actually structuring the video a little bit different than normal. I'm actually starting with the best cards on the list and then going down to kind of the less awesome cards as we get further and further. But as we get further and further down the list, those cards should increase your chance of getting approved. Everyone's different, every card's different, let's do it. Number one, the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. Oh, real quick, in case you didn't know this, this card is a phenomenal card, but it's a little bit harder for brand new people involved in credit. Chase is a little bit picky, but good news is if you currently bank with Chase and you have a history with Chase banking, then you've got a really high chance of getting approved for this card. If you do not bank with Chase, I don't, and I don't really recommend it or endorse it. Hey, that's your choice, but if you do, props to you because you can get a really great credit card out of it. They approve users who have Chase bank accounts way more frequently than users who don't. Oh yeah, and then one more thing I forgot to mention is almost every single creditor or credit card company is gonna have the 524 rule, which is pretty much saying if you've applied to five credit cards in the last 24 months, you're almost always gonna get denied. So if you're like going trigger happy on applying to tons of credit cards and you've applied to like 15 in the last week, yikes. But all right, back to the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. Okay, here's the benefits of this guy. One, no annual fee. 
Two, you get a welcome bonus, all right? And they're really good right now. You get a $200 bonus if you spend $500 in the first three months. That should be very, very easy, okay? Most people spend $100 a week on food, so that's a no-brainer. And then two, you get 5% grocery store cash back in the first 12 months. Again, most people spend about $100 on food every week at the grocery store, so bang, now you're spending 95 with that 5% cash back. You're welcome. And then another bonus is uh, low intro APR. You should never be paying interest on your credit cards anyway. But the spending categories indefinitely for this card is 5% cash back on travel, 3% on dining, 3% on drug stores, and 1.5% on all other purchases. Very solid card, and I actually wanna talk about its twin brother right now. The Chase Freedom Flex card is another phenomenal option, and I kind of categorize these as both the number one cards just because it's kind of your preference because they're very similar. This one, again, no annual fee. You get some great welcome bonuses. Same one, $200 in the, if you spend $500 in the first three months, okay? You get 5% grocery store cash back, and again, the low intro APR. The difference with this card is you still get your 5% on travel, you get your 3% on dining, your 3% on drugstore, you only get 1% on all of their purchases, but every quarter, so four quarters out of the year, you get a 5% bonus on the specific category. So if you wanna keep up to date with which category you're getting the 5% cash back on and you have the time to kind of categorize that and, and make sure you're spending in that category, then go with that card. Um, if you're like me and you don't really want to keep up to date with which quarter you're getting 5% cash back, go with the other card because you're getting the 1.5 on all other purchases. Your call. And then the last side note I want to say with these cards is, well, again, I hate to say it, but Chase has a very cool refer a friend program that I highly recommend you utilize if you get one of those cards. Again, I don't bank with Chase. I don't even really like feeding a beast of a massive company even more and, and supporting big companies, but they've got a really good refer a friend feature. You basically just refer friends to other Chase credit cards or other Chase products and you get some free moolah in return, which is honestly pretty cool. And because the fact that pretty much everyone is an influencer these days, I figured I'd throw that in there so you can make a little bit of money off of all your friends and family like everyone else is doing. <laughs> Okay, number two on my list, and completely ignore what I just said about feeding a massive company because my number two card on this list is the Amazon Rewards card. I actually have this card, so that's how much of a fan I am of it. I spent a lot of money on Amazon, what can I say? All right, this card, you got no annual fee on the credit card, okay? You get a $100 Amazon gift card on sign up, which is a great welcome bonus. You get 5% on Amazon and Whole Foods with a Prime membership, which still costs and 3% without Prime, okay? Regardless, you're getting 2% on restaurants, gas, and drugstores, and then 1% on all other purchases. Now, they are actually running a special right now, not sure if this is gonna last for a long time, but you get 10% cash back on special products on Amazon. Again, you have to go check their page to see which products qualify, but that's a lot of money. And then you also get a couple cool bonuses like no foreign transaction fees, lost luggage reimbursement, roadside dispatch, purchase protection, and then premium benefits from uh, some of Visa's hotels, which is pretty cool. And then number three, this is gonna be the fan favorite out of pretty much everyone because it's a very cool and futuristic card. It is the X1 credit card. This is like all the rage these days, okay? Um, definitely have the coolest landing page out of all credit cards, but they've got no annual fee. They have something really cool where they don't actually do a hard pull when you apply. You actually have to accept the card later and then they do a hard pull. So there's really no risk for applying for this one because they do a soft credit pull on application, which I really don't know how they're gonna keep up with that because it costs money to do a credit check. And if they're basically paying for these soft pulls and then eventually these hard pulls, the customer acquisition cost is getting very expensive. But hey, take advantage of it while they have it. And then another bonus is for people who actually earn a lot of money, they give really high limits on this card, which is super cool. Uh, you get four X back on the first 30 days if you refer a friend, which is cool because a lot of people are gonna be referring this card because it's pretty sick. They literally have a section on the landing page of what it sounds like when you drop the card. How sick is that? But you get 3X back if you spend $15,000 in a year. You get 2X back on all other purchases. Overall, it's just a really solid card to have in your wallet because it kind of replaces a debit card. It doesn't really have specific categories or specific things that, that you know they want you to spend money in. They just want you to spend money. Uh, so that's kind of cool about that card. And then 
One little caveat is maybe by the time you're watching this video, it's different. But as of right now, you can only join the waitlist for this card. It's not actually out yet. It's kind of like the Robin Hood card when everyone wanted one of those. There's this massive waitlist of getting on it. And then once they actually start releasing them, then you'll get your card. Who knows? It might already be out though. But the number four card on my list is actually a favorite of mine. It's the Blue Cash American Express. Okay, this is a great card that approves a good amount of brand new individuals despite the American Express brand. A lot of people think, oh, American Express, that's a premium brand. I can only get an American Express card if I've got great credit and great credit history. But this is the one card that's kind of an exception and they approve a lot of people. So, of course, no annual fee. We got welcome bonuses, right? 20% cash back on Amazon in the first six months, okay? Up to $200 back. So it's kind of like a clickbait, but it's still cool, $200 back. And if you think about it, it should be incredibly easy for you to get. You only have to spend $1,000 in six months to get 200 free dollars. I might actually spend that in a month on Amazon, which I am not proud of, but it should be easy nonetheless. <laughs> you also get a $150 bonus if you spend $1,000 in the first three months. So literally just spend $1,000 on Amazon in the first three months and you're getting tons of money cash back in $350 for free. And then of course you get the 0% intro APR for the first 15 months. Now, some other benefits with it, you get 3% cash back at supermarkets, 2% on gas, 2% on department stores, which is pretty cool, and then 1% on all other purchases. Overall, it's a really solid card that I highly recommend to friends and family. Uh, again, it has phenomenal upgrade paths. American Express is, in my opinion, one of the best credit card brands out there. So it's a phenomenal starter card. Now the number five card that's coming in is another massive fan favorite. I am not a huge fan of this card at all, but I have to admit it is great for people who are just beginning to get into credit. It's, of course, the Apple credit card, right? And everyone's like, ooh, ah, it changes colors on your phone. Whoa, it's kind of cool, it's kind of cool. Again, no annual fee. It's got a very easy approval process. In fact, if you get denied, they actually give you a path to get approved. You know, they give you like little tasks and whatnot to get approved. I don't know of any other card that does that, so that's a major competitive advantage. They also do not do a hard pull on application. They do, you know, a soft pull, and then when you accept the card, that's when they actually do their hard pull. Again, that's kind of a bonus. You get 1% on all purchases. You get 2% every time you use it with Apple Pay. So you Apple fanboys will love that. And then 3% at Apple and a few other merchants. Again, this card is mainly for you Apple fanboys out there, which I am not an Apple fanboy. Moving on to number six. This is probably the most popular first starter credit card just because they have phenomenal marketing and branding for people who are just getting into credit. And that is the Discover It cashback card. Again, it's the classic hometown hero beginner card that most people get. Of course, no annual fee, very easy approval, and again, it's probably one of the easiest cards to get approved for on this list. You get 5% back on rotating categories. Again, you have to kind of keep up to date with which categories are rotating that quarter. Um, you get a first year cash back match, which is different than a lot of the cards on here. Obviously, it's up to a certain amount depending on when you, uh, when you apply and get approved. You get 25 different designs. I know that's very simple, but that's so rare. Most credit cards all have the exact same design. So the fact that you can kind of pick your design on this one is definitely something kind of unique that a lot of people really like. The rewards are kind of okay when you look at this list, but that's why it's number you know six on this list, all right? It's great for starting when you have zero credit or very little credit, um, and it's a phenomenal card to upgrade to. That's kind of the last benefit is upgrading this card is phenomenal. Discover has some awesome, awesome options. It just doesn't have the best benefit to your first card. But again, it's a great starter card that's definitely going to get you some good credit history. Then number seven on this list is something that should definitely approve you, I think. At least they pretty much advertise that they approve anyone with no credit or very little credit. So blame Capital One if you get denied. But we're talking about the Capital One Platinum card, all right? It is nothing special, but again, has the highest approval rate out of all of these cards. And it's just a good wholesome card, right? We got no annual fee. Again, very easy approval. There's no hard pull on application. This is another big one that a lot of people probably really like, all right? And again, it just builds credit. It upgrades really well. Capital One has some phenomenal cards. And you know, you get a couple of you know nice technology perks. Nothing too sexy. And if you're like incredibly overwhelmed with this list and you're like, oh gosh, I can't even keep track of what category when and where to spend and how to redeem my card and blah, blah, blah. Like all this stuff is just too much for you to even comprehend. Then I got the card just for you. I'm throwing in a little bonus for you. The City Double Cash Card. 
This takes a cake for my honorable mention because literally it is the simplest credit card on the market. You get 2% cash back on all purchases, no welcome bonuses, no, no crazy little bells and whistles. It's literally just a no annual fee card that gives you 2% on all purchases. It is like the basic of basic. But honestly, sometimes basic is good because you don't have to worry about anything. You just know when I'm spending this, I'm getting 2% cash back no matter where the heck I'm spending it. Simple dunzo. Now, I know a lot of people might be kind of stressed out with picking their first credit card and I just want to say do not feel overwhelmed. I know it can kind of feel like it's more important than picking a wife these days because you're going to have your credit card for pretty much ever to build that credit history but do not stress it. You can upgrade so many of these cards to something that you actually want. So don't worry about it. This is just kind of to get your foot in the door, start building some good credit history, start getting your feet wet with credit. Don't make any credit mistakes, but just kind of understand how the credit game works. And then in five or seven years, you can kind of upgrade to specifically what you want. Worst case, you throw your gym membership on it, you throw it on auto pay and you put it in your drawer and you never even look at it ever again. It's gonna build you credit automatically. You're not even gonna notice it. Ultimately, pick a card you like, use it and go back to living your life. Credit should not be the major focus of your life. So many people call me super stressed out about their credit cards and I'm like, do not worry about it, all right? Just spend responsibly and move on, which by the way is only 30% of your limit. So if you get a $1,000 card balance, don't ever spend more than $300 on it. Do not say I didn't warn you. But that is my list for the best starter credit cards you can get as of right now, moving into 2021. So let me know which one is your favorite in the comments down below. Also, if you actually wanna learn about credit, how to properly spend with credit cards, and ultimately how to boost your score, then check out the video playlist I have down below on credit. There's some really great videos there, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I've got so many great videos planned in the coming weeks about credit and about some really good things you need to know. So again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found value in it, that's my goal. I will see you in the next video.